guys, welcome back to Riding with Ron. And uh, today we are talking about boost controllers. Boost. I am a huge fan of turbos. Turbos are awesome. Turbos are fun. Um, force induction is probably the greatest thing ever invented. Now, to get more of that, you need something called a boost controller. Now, most cars have a standard boost solenoid, and what it does is it detects how much boost you're turbo is putting out and then allows vacuum or uh, boost pressure depending on the setup to flow to the waste gate and therefore open the waste gate and not allowing the turbo to gain any more uh, pressure. Now, there are two different types of boost controllers out there. You have your manual boost controllers and you have your electronic boost controllers. Now, there's a huge difference in, uh, in both manual between the manual and electronic. And it's more than just, well, electronic you can adjust electronically and manual you have to set manually. Now, <clears throat> it starts, you know, right away off with the base price for the different controllers. For a manual boost controller, you could pick one up for about 30 to $50 uh, for a real cheap one. For a really nice one, about $100, $150. And uh, it's basically just like a bleeder valve. Uh, it's got the two lines, one to the... Uh, to the manifold and one to the uh, <clears throat> the uh, the wastegate, and uh, basically, you know, the little knob on top. You set the uh, the boost uh, or the knob, you know, to, to where you want it, and then you check your boost gauge to see how much boost you're getting. Uh, not a bad solution uh, for trying to just get, you know, I just want a certain amount of boost, uh, and that's it. You know, I just want to turn my boost up a little bit, but uh, it is a pain in the ass. Person that daily drives your, your car, you, uh, you're stuck with that boost unless you pop up in the hood and reset it, and um, there's no exactly, like, specific, like, doesn't say, like, oh, set it here for 15 pounds instead of here for 5, no, you just have little clicks, and you kind of have to guesstimate. Now, uh, before I continue any further, if you are going to put a boost controller on any turbo vehicle, and I can attest to this personally, please first install a boost gauge. An aftermarket boost gauge, okay? Now, my very first turbo car was a DSM, and uh, it's got a little boost gauge on the on the dashboard, right? It's like uh, 14 pounds. That doesn't actually work. It's not. It's not an actual gauge. It's just more of a oh, cool. Look at it, it moves. I mean, really, it's it's more for aesthetics than a precision gauge. Now. Um, the aftermarket ones, they sell a lot of different ones, and uh, you know, definitely don't cheap out on your boost gauge. Get a, get a decent boost gauge, get one to look, you know, give you a very accurate reading before you get one that's going to look nice or match the colors of your car or, or any of that kind of stuff, because this is important, okay? You want to know exactly how much pressure is going back there. Now, if you're going to get an electronic boost controller, and this is another difference, the electronic boost controllers act as your boost gauge as well. So, um... It's kind of an all-inclusive thing where, you know, an electronic boost controller may run you in between, from what I was looking at, between $400 and $800, depending on how much you want to spend. But this comes with your electronic solenoid, uh, all the install parts, you know, the wiring, uh, the, uh, the vacuum hose, uh, the little T-sections, the controller itself, um, and the controller then also acts like a gauge. And... Uh, so, I mean, it's really an all-in-one. If you get a manual boost controller, what you're going to get is the little bleeder valve plus some vacuum hose. Not exactly, you know, the most complete kit out there, but that would be why it's it's a lot less uh, expensive than a manual one, you know, because then you also have to add in the price of a, of a gauge and, uh, you know, the mounting equipment and everything for that. So, um, keeping that in mind... Um, you know, that, that is a big reason why the electronic ones are so much more expensive. Now, um, the electronic ones also have a lot more than just set the boost and, and away we go. Um, and they're a lot more precise, too. Now, um, the, a lot of them have um, a lot of different settings. So, so first you have, you know, your standard, you know, boost setting. And, you, and that's in a percentage on most of them, you, 0 to 100%, um, how much you want the... the uh, boost solenoid closed, and uh, it's also really great because they store settings too, so you have your daily driver setting, you know, put it at 5 pounds of boost, your racetrack setting, put it at, you know, 25 pounds of boost, 
or whatever. And they're they're really great. They're very complimentary to uh, like your your uh, tuning computers and stuff. Any kind of uh, piggyback or standalone system, you know, definitely recommend getting one of these. But uh, you know, they are a little more expensive. Um, they also have different settings um, as far as like mass. Uh, max boost, uh, boost cut, where it'll, it'll just, oh man, this is too much, I'm just going to open up all the way, um, <clears throat> it does, it does a lot more, um, and from what I understand, you can get, it's got, you know, like a wastegate delay and stuff, and it'll make it so that way, you know, you get the best, you know, responsiveness out of your turbo system. If you have a very laggy turbo, this actually may help your problems somewhat, you know, but some turbos are big and they're laggy and that's just, you know, that's the drawback to turbo. The, the plus side of turbo is that it's a lot more powerful than anything else. But, um, <laughs> but in all seriousness, um, you know, an electronic boost controller is, is really a great thing. You know, it, it acts as your gauge. you got a lot of different settings. Um, a lot of them, you know, you can change the colors on the, on the dash display so you're not just... Um, what I would recommend if you have a turbo car and... You're on a budget. Um, a manual boost controller and a boost gauge works just fine. Okay. Um, however, an electronic boost gauge is a million times better than a manual boost gauge. And uh, you get a lot more for your money. And uh, it definitely makes your car, a turbo car, a lot more enjoyable, in my opinion. And uh, it makes it a lot easier to, to tune your boost as well. Um, a lot of people don't know this, but, excuse me, I got a lot of something stuck in my throat, something stuck in my throat, alright, cool, a lot of people don't know this, but, um, boost is, is best gauged, um, in a, in a stronger gear, so like, uh, no, not a stronger gear, I'm sorry, in a, in a higher gear, so, usually about third gear, um, for most cars, is, is really good to, to tune your boost, where, in a, you know, first and second, um, you know, the different gearing's gonna make the engine react differently, so finding you know, your boost settings and all that, um, it's going to be a lot um, easier to do with an electronic boost controller because you can just do it on the highway um, in third gear. You don't have to pull over, stop, pop the hood, set it, put it down again, you know, restart all over again. Um, and also, you know, the, the digital thing, it, it'll tell you exactly where your peak boost was, um, what your steady boost was, and you can really tune, uh, you know, your boost controller to, to give you the best boost out of your turbocharger um, as possible. It's, it's, you know, it, it definitely takes a lot of the guesswork out of it, um, but when it comes down to, to electronic boost gauges, they can be very um, expensive. Now, um, my personal recommendation for an electronic boost controller is the AEM True Boost because it just looks like a boost gauge. It just looks like a cool digital boost gauge, but uh, really it's a full electronic controller. So you can still have it in a little like pod setup or whatever. Nobody's any the wiser that you have an electronic boost controller. And you know, there you go, you get all the benefits of, of both in, uh, in one package. I'm sorry, I know it's getting really dark really quick. It's fucking winter, bro. Fucking winter. But uh, that's my video on boost controllers for today because it's getting very dark and you can't see me. But uh, hey, well, let me know what you guys thought in the comment section down below. Tell me what, uh, tell me what your favorite boost controller is. Or uh, if you have any other questions about boost, boost controllers, turbos, any uh, fun little car parts, you let me know. I'll do a video on it, I promise. So uh, while you're down there making comments and telling me what to do, you like and subscribe because, you know, feel good, man. Anyway, guys, I'm Rob telling you to enjoy the drive.